Okay, this video is probably going to be a pretty short one. What we're going to do is we're just going to take a visual look at four different types of titration curves that one might see. So a titration curve always, always, always has uh, a very consistent beginning uh, for what the axes look like on our charts. So I'm always going to have the pH over here for all of these. And then regardless of the combination of acids and bases that we're using, we're always going to talk about the volume added over here. And that's going to be of the titrant. So that is the thing that's up in the burette. Uh, you start with a solution and it's going to have a particular pH associated with it. And then you're usually adding either a strong acid or a strong base, whichever is needed to do the neutralization. So over on these ones, just to save a little bit of time, I'm going to just say VA for volume added, VA, VA. Okay. So whenever you have a strong acid, so I'm going to say strong acid titrated with a strong base, okay? I would have some sort of curve that's going to look like this. I would start down here, it's a strong acid, so before I add any volume of base, I better be way down here somewhere in very low pHs. So this could be down at one or something like that. And as I add, this is just gonna go through this very nice S-shaped curve, okay? So that was a pretty good curve. I'm, I'm looking for something that has some symmetry. Like you would wanna be able to peel this down and it should look very symmetrical. You see very rapid changes here when you're in and around pH seven. And I'm gonna take what I think might be the middle of this particular spot and I'm gonna go over it and I'm gonna say that is pH seven right there. So this might be something like a, a, I don't know, a one, and this might be a 13 or so up here. It depends on what concentration I'm actually starting with. But this is that characteristic curve that you should see. So what about when you are doing a strong base with a strong acid titrant? Okay, so again, this is the stuff that's up uh, in the burette. This is going to start way up at high pHs because it's a strong base. It's going to go down a nice steep part of the curve and go over. And that should be pretty symmetrical also. Right wherever I think is the middle of that, I'm going to put a pH 7 right there. This could be, for example, up at a 13, and this could be down close to a 1. Again, it really depends. Now, in both cases, uh, this location here, we call this the, this, this is the equivalence point. This is when uh, the, all of the acid in this case that we started with has had enough volume added of the base so that we have neutralized everything. And so this is really a stoichiometry problem in this part here where uh, once you get to this location, you have perfect ratios of your acid and your base so that you have completely neutralized. Over here, we actually still have excess acid because we're acidic. And over here, we have excess base. Uh, and so we are still, we are now in the basic region here. So excess acid, perfect amount of each, excess base, and it's really these single arrow equilibriums. And then you can make some similar comments about what's going over here. Excess base, perfect match, and then you're gonna have your uh, excess acid because you're, you're still adding new volume to this here. All right, um, so this is a very important point. This is the equivalence point. The, point. Um, and down here, we tend to also talk about the end point. 
Now, somewhere in this range, usually you have, and I'm just kind of coloring in over here, you tend to have some sort of color change if you have a uh, something like phenolphthalein also in the solution. So remember, phenolphthalein starts clear and then it turns pink when it's in high uh, pHs. And so somewhere in this region, perhaps, and we can look up when phenolphthalein turns, uh, but what it's going to do is somewhere in that zone, you're going to see a color switch. In this case, we would go from pink to clear if we were doing it here. Okay, so now let's go to the weeks. So this is going to be a weak acid. And then this is going to be titrated with um, a strong base. Okay, this is going to be uh, a weak base titrated with uh, a strong acid. Okay. So notice whatever's up in the burette, that's what we're using to titrate with. We always use strongs for those. Nobody in their right mind would ever use a weak acid and then titrate with a weak base. This is way more complicated than it needs to be. The goal of the titration typically is to figure out exactly um, how much you have for your unknown um, in the sample to begin with. And so it's just really not very useful for us to use a weak against a weak because uh, the equilibrium can, chemistry can be quite complicated. All right, so now I'm going to draw what does it look like for a weak acid. And I want you to notice, first of all, up here I said we started at something super low like a 1. Down here I may not be that low. I don't know what it, you know, it depends on the chemical, but maybe I'm starting at a 3 or something like that. You're going to notice that there tends to be this little kick up that I'm kind of drawing, then it flattens for a while, then it goes up and over. Okay? Here's that middle point that seems of interest to me, but watch what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to drop below that middle point, and I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to say this is pH 7. So what you have here is pH is greater than 7 for this. When you are doing your titration, what's going to happen is we're starting with all acid over here. So this is all HA, all HA that's happening over here. And what we're doing is we're putting in something like a sodium hydroxide or a potassium hydroxide, and we're ripping these protons off of this stuff. Or actually, given that it's a strong, they're already separated. But I mean, we're, we're starting to use up some of these extra protons in here. And so by the time I actually neutralize, uh, I've put in a lot of OH minuses here, and they're going to go find those H pluses. Over here, I'm effectively all A minus. Um, I'm almost all conjugate base. And part of me, I just realized that I had said before that this was a strong acid. And that was incorrect. I'm doing a weak acid. So these are staying largely together, but I am still nonetheless taking the protons away from them as I add the OH minus. I get over here, and I'm effectively all A minus by the time I get to the equivalence point over here. But the deal is, is that it is not a brilliant approximation to say that this all actually stays as A minus. This is a weak base. And so it's going to actually raise the pH of the solution by just a little bit because this thing is going to go find some fresh waters in solution and very occasionally it's going to take an H plus from them. It's going to go back to looking like this form. Um, but in that process, it's going to make a little bit of OH minus. So that's why the pH is above 7 here. Okay, let's just do this last one. This is going to have a little kick associated with it. Often, it's going to kind of loop down. All right, so here's where I think my main, my middle, kind of the equivalence point is. And you're going to notice that I started with all A minus here. 
But by the time I get over here, I'm gonna have effectively all H plus because this was a weak base. So I have a whole bunch of A minus. It's being titrated with a strong acid. I'm putting new protons into solution. They're eventually all going on top of this thing. My, if this is the mark there, where uh, I think I have effectively put in, you know, uh, like if I had 12 of these, then I've put in 12 new protons so that I can kind of protonate all of these. This is going to be pH 7 over here. So I'm actually going to be on the acidic side of neutral in this particular case because of the way that that works. So these are your curves. You should notice a few things about this. These are highly symmetrical and they really will cross through seven every single time because of the nature of a strong acid and a strong base. But the weak ones are more interesting. Look for these little kicks. Sometimes that the weak acid's gonna start at higher levels and when it crosses, it's not gonna actually cross at seven. Just like over here, the weak base is not gonna cross at seven. Um, it's gonna be a little bit south of that. You can see the little kick there that I kind of drew. And these regions in a different video, we're gonna talk about the buffer zone here, okay? And so there's a buffer zone and there's a buffer zone when I have a significant quantity of both of the conjugate pairs. Buffer zone, significant quantity of both of the conjugate pairs before I've converted everything over. All right, that's a little bit of a tutorial there on those titration curves. We'll do a new video for the next part.